Welcome to episode three in my beginner's guide, how to build a gaming PC video series. If you've come across this video without having seen episodes one and two, then you're in luck because it just so happens that you can find both of them in the cards right up over here. For those of you that don't trust those new fangled sorts of contraptions, uh, I've placed some good old fashioned links in the video description as well to help fill you in on everything that uh, we've gone over up to this point. Now, for those of you that have already watched episodes one and two, I know that you're eager to move on to the next step. So before I go and do my usual beginning of the video ramblings, In this episode, originally I was wanting to pick up where I left off in episode 2, but as I began outlining how I felt the video should go, I realized that I needed to slow things down a little bit. My intent for this video series is not only to help first-time PC builders build their own computer, but to also arm them with the knowledge to help them make an informed buying decision while shopping for their components. So before we do any more building, we need to talk about some very important components that I have yet to talk about in my previous videos in the series. Those being your power supply, storage drives, and of course everybody's favorite, your graphics card. As for your graphics card, I have a beginner's guide video that I made about a year and a half or so ago that is both a buyer's guide as well as an installation guide that is admittedly a little bit cringy looking back at it, but at the same time I feel all the information is still useful and relevant, so I of course recommend that you check that video out as well to help you with choosing your graphics card and then installing it into your system. Uh, you can check it out here in the cards as well as in the video description. And if you want to go ahead and check it out right now, uh, you go right on ahead. Just, you know, hit the pause button down here and I'll hang out and wait here till you come back. Oh, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. Or, you know, at least learn, you know, one or two new things. Next up, we're going to talk about power supplies. I know, super exciting, right? Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know all there is to know about power supplies. Uh, to be honest, I feel I only have a very basic understanding, so if you're looking for a more in-depth explanation about power supplies, you can check out this video from Jay's Two Cents. He has a much more in-depth understanding than I do and offers some great advice and a lot of great information that will expand your knowledge. That being said, I would like to share what I do know as well as share how I go about uh, choosing a power supply. As a first-time builder, choosing a power supply can be a somewhat daunting task. They range in wattage from around 150 watts or so all the way up to 1600 watts and then there's all this 80 plus rating stuff. Uh, some are 80 plus bronze rated, others 80 plus gold or even titanium. There are some that are simply 80 plus rated and then others with no rating at all. Uh, this was all a little confusing to me too when I was first starting out. The 80 plus rating stuff is, as you have probably guessed, a power efficiency rating. Anything that is 80 plus rated means it's at least 80% efficient at 20, 50, and 100% of its rated load. So as you may expect, as you go up from 80 plus certified to 80 plus bronze to silver to gold to platinum, and then finally titanium, that the efficiency is getting better and better. It also means the power supplies are getting more and more expensive. Uh, so for me personally, I usually stick to the 80 plus bronze to 80 plus gold range, and that is in part due to the subjectively ridiculous cost of the higher rated PSUs, but also due to the fact that the platinum and titanium rated power supplies are usually the super high wattage ones that I don't need anyway. 
When it comes to choosing the wattage of a power supply, the main determining factor for me is what graphics card I plan to be putting into my rig. Uh, once I've chosen the graphics card I want to buy, I look at what the recommended power supply wattage is for that card. And then I shop for a PSU that meets that requirement. It's really important that you don't cheap out on your power supply. It is literally the power plant of your computer. It is what supplies every single component in your computer with the electricity they need to operate. So as you can imagine, having a good, reliable power supply is something that you're going to want. Especially when you consider that you're dropping a thousand plus dollars on the rest of your hardware. JohnnyGuru.com is one of the best, if not the best, review sites for power supplies. I highly recommend checking their site to see what they have to say about a particular power supply that you may be interested in purchasing. For the adventurous souls among you that may want to try overclocking your GPU, as a general rule of thumb, you'll want to get a power supply that is rated at at least 100 watts above the recommended wattage for your card just to be safe. Your computer is going to of course need something to install your operating system onto, as well as to save all of your programs, games, and other files onto, so let's talk about storage. There are two main categories of storage drives. You have your traditional magnetic spinning hard disk drives, and your solid state drives or SSDs. First off, I want to talk about the good old hard drive. They've been around for a very long time and have matured a lot in their time as well. Their read write speeds nowadays are much better than they were in my youth and their capacity has grown tremendously. Just like all other components, there are a lot of different manufacturers and models of hard drives to choose from. Uh, the most popular and reputable brands are Western Digital, or WD, Seagate, HGST, and Toshiba. Admittedly, I'm a bit of a WD fan, have been using their hard drives for years, so I'm most familiar with their line uh, of products, so that's what I'll be talking about primarily here. Uh, WD has color-coded their hard drives based on what kind of use they're designed for. Other manufacturers like Seagate have also done similar things to help differentiate the various models of drives they sell, but as for WD, their color coding is as follows. You have your green, blue, black, red, purple, and then their data center drives. Uh, data center drives are of course intended for use in data centers, so we're not going to concern ourselves with those. Um, red drives are designed for use in network attached storage devices. Purple are for uh, video surveillance systems. And then the three that are most relevant to us building a gaming PC are the green, blue, and black drives. Uh, blue drives are pretty much your normal all around average hard drives. Uh, they're kind of your Mario, if you will, of hard drives. Uh, greens are similar to blues, but they use less power, so they're ever so slightly slower than a blue. Uh, and then blacks are your performance drives. They, they cost more than blue drives do, but they do offer noticeably better performance. As for me, personally, I like to use WD black drives because I feel that the performance bump you get from them is totally worth the extra money you pay for them. However, I also own some WD blues, and they're great hard drives as well, and there's no denying that their price per gig ratio makes them a very compelling option. The main advantage to using a hard drive in your computer rather than an SSD is due to their cost per gig ratio. For example, this 7200 RPM 1TB WD Blue hard drive is only 50 US dollars. That equates to 5 cents per gig. A while back, WD purchased SanDisk and has recently begun manufacturing solid state drives, and they also have a 1TB WD Blue SSD. Um, same capacity as the hard drive, however, it costs $280, which equates to $0.28 cents per gig, 
uh, which is over five times as much per gigabyte. When it comes to performance, as you probably know, SSDs are much faster than traditional hard drives, which is why they cost so much more. Currently, there are two categories of SSDs. There are SATA SSDs and NVMe SSDs. The difference between the two is the transfer protocol and interface they use. SATA SSDs use the AHCI protocol over the SATA interface, which has a maximum transfer rate of about 600 megabytes per second. To put that into perspective, that's between two and three times as fast as a modern spinning hard drive can do. Now, if you're thinking, wow, that's pretty fast, just wait. NVMe is the protocol used by some of the newer SSDs out there. The popular form factor you'll see right now is the M.2 drive, which is about the size of a stick of gum. Uh, anyway, these drives use the NVMe protocol over the PCI Express interface. And if you're using a modern PCIe Gen 3x4 slot, you're talking about a maximum transfer rate of around four gigabytes per second. Yeah, so these types of drives are between three and four times as fast as SATA SSDs. Of course, you're going to be paying through the nose for these kinds of drives right now, but as time goes on, I'm confident that they will become more mainstream and much more affordable. At which time, something even better will be available for ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, as for what I would recommend for someone building a gaming PC right now, um, that of course depends on what your budget is, partially. Um, but that being said, uh, what I like to do right now is get a one or two terabyte mechanical hard drive to use for mass storage. Like to install games onto and to store files and media onto and then get a 250 to 500 gigabyte SATA SSD to install Windows and all of my frequently used programs onto. Uh, what this does is give me very quick boot times and just an overall fast, responsive experience. I know there are a lot of different SSDs to choose from and you're probably wondering, you know, which one should I get? Honestly, you don't even need to worry about buying the most expensive, fastest SSD available. Uh, any SSD you choose will offer a very fast, snappy user experience uh, when compared to a mechanical hard drive. If you're curious to see the difference between a SSD and a mechanical hard drive, I actually made a video where I upgraded the hard drive in my HP laptop to an SSD and then compared the boot times. Uh, feel free to check it out if you'd like. So far, the only brands of SSDs I've personally used are Samsung and Crucial, and I've been very pleased with both of them. Uh, other brands that I've heard good things about are, of course, WD, as well as Adata, Kingston, HyperX, SanDisk, Intel, and OCZ Toshiba. And that, my friends, is all the more of your time I'll monopolize for now. In episode four, we're gonna get back to building and get our custom gaming PC up and running, as I'm sure that's what you're most excited to see anyway. <laughs> as for this video, I hope I was able to pass on a little of my knowledge and experience to you, and that you enjoyed it, and have either already clicked the like button, or are just about to do. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, go right on and click that subscribe button now. It's totally 100% free. And who doesn't love free stuff, am I right? If you'd like to chat a bit about the curvature of four-dimensional space-time, or just want to say hi, uh, feel free to hit me up in the comments and I will do my very best to get back to you there. As always, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to hang out with me for a bit and watch this video. I hope you have a super fantastic day, and uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, is that it? Oh, well, all right then.